what we're gonna need for the front end is node.js so if you go to node.js.org you should be presented with a page like this and you can either download either version and the reason we need node.js is because we need the node package manager so that we can install the angular cli so i have the angular cli open and you can see the command right here it's npm i for install and then at angular slash cli and the angular cli is a command line interface and you can use it to manage angular application so create application deploy build all the fancy stuff that you can do now with command line interface so go ahead and download any versions of node.js that you see on here it doesn't really matter because we're not really going to be using node.js per se and then once you have node.js installed go ahead and install the angular cli by just running this command and after you do that you should be ready to go i mean assuming you don't get no errors or anything so now i'm gonna create the angular application so i'm gonna open my terminal and i'm gonna bring it up here so this is my terminal you can use any terminal you want doesn't really matter and we're gonna create the angular application and to do this we're gonna do ng so after you install the angular cli you have access to this command which is ng so this is like how you invoke the angular cli and then you can pass in commands and it's just gonna do things for you you know help you manage your application create the application run it deploy it etc and to create an application all you have to do is ng new and then you pass in the name of the application so in this case i'm gonna call it server app the back end is called server the front end is called server app just to make the difference between the back end and the front end and then i'm gonna press enter and i think i have to answer some questions here i'm gonna say yes on that would you like to add angular routing so this is a single page application and by this i mean we're not gonna have any different route it's always gonna be one page so i'm gonna say end to this for no and it's asking if i want css sas or scss for my styling i'm gonna stick with css and it's gonna go ahead and create the application for me as you can see it's installing all the packages that i want so i'm gonna let this finish and then i'm gonna come back everything is installed so i'm gonna go ahead and navigate to that folder so server app and i'm gonna clear the screen and what i want to do is open this with visual studio code so i'm gonna type code dot to specify this folder and then visual studio code is gonna open in that specific folder so i'm gonna press enter and it opened in my other screen so i'm just gonna go ahead and grab it over and open it up so you should be presented with a screen like this and all the files and folders are going to be on your left on your panel here as you can see everything is populated everything has been created so there's one thing i want to say before i actually start doing anything so for the front end i'm going to be using a more advanced technique and i'm going to take a reactive approach so we're not going to have a procedural way of doing things like when you define functions and things like that and then you call the function and then you wait for a response well per se we're going to kind of do that but it's going to be more reactive than anything else and i'm going to go ahead and show you what that means in a second and i'm going to show you the example where we have a procedural way and when we have a reactive way and you're gonna see the difference and also see the benefits of using the reactive ways it's gonna be a little bit more advanced but there's a lot of benefits for using a reactive approach in angular than using a procedural approach if we inspect the package.json for example and we scroll down a little bit and all the dependencies you're gonna see that we have rxjs here so by default the angular application that you get from using the angular cli it comes bundled with the rxjs library which means that whoever created this framework they intended for the developers to use this library in their development and we're really gonna be making extensive use of this library so that we can create the reactive approach that we want to do in this application and you're gonna see how this is gonna be different from what you've been seeing and you can also see the benefits for creating your angular application that way so i don't want to say it's better than the procedural approach because you know they all have their benefits and disadvantages but that's just going to give you a different perspective when you're building your angular application so really pay attention to what i'm going to be doing here and if you have any questions of course reach out to me i'll be glad to help you so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing i want to do is gonna go ahead and close this and expand the source folder go inside the app folder and in this folder i want to create another folder so i'm gonna do new folder and then i'm gonna name it enum so i'm gonna I put all of the enums that i'm going to be creating inside of this folder so i'm going to right click and do new file and i'm going to call this status.enum.ts so i'm going to create the status that we created in the back end so that we can map it in the front end right here so i'm going to do export and this is an enum i'm going to say status and open and close curly braces 
and I'm going to press control B so that I can close the panel. And for the enum, I want the all. So you remember in the beginning, when I gave you the demo, you saw that you can filter everything by all. We don't have that in the back end, but we do have it in the front end because I want to give the user the ability to select all and then view all the statuses for all the servers. And I'm going to set this equal to a string. That's going to be the same thing. So that's going to be the first enum. The second one is going to be server up. So exactly what we have in the back end. So I'm going to do server up and I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to the same string. So I'm going to do server underscore up. And then lastly, we have server down. So I'm going to do server underscore down again, set it equal to the same string. So this is going to represent the status that we're going to be working with for the servers. So that's one enum that I'm going to need. 